Welcome and thank you for being here. My name is Kirsten Plunkett and I am assisting with coordinating the Food for Thought Edible Education Partnership Program. And I am so excited to be here today. I'd like to begin today by acknowledging our distinguished guests, who as I speak, if they can come a little closer for their turn to speak. Um, who, and first I'd like to start with our guests who traveled here today from Richmond, Virginia. Um, Laura Fornash, Virginia Secretary of of education, just raise your hand. <laughs> and Todd Haymore, Secretary of Agriculture. It's a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you. I'd also like to acknowledge our many distinguished local guests. We have Dr. David Trinkle, City Councilman. Thank you. Dr. Rita Bishop, Superintendent of Roanoke City Public Schools. Dr. Angela Falconetti, Vice President of Institutional Advancement with Virginia Western Community College. <laughs> Cynthia Lawrence, Food for Thought Founding Chair. <laughs> and Stephanie Hogan, Principal of James Madison Middle School. This is her home. <laughs> Thank you. I'd also like to thank the Virginia Western Community College Education Foundation Board and the Food for Thought Advisory Board for your vision. For without it, we would not be where we are today. Thanks to the leadership of Virginia Western Community College, Roanoke City Public Schools, and Roanoke City for sharing and supporting the vision of Food for Thought as well. And special thank you to, let me see if I see her, Suzanne Moore. Where is Suzanne? Suzanne can raise her hand. <laughs> Suzanne Moore Thank you. is a board member of Roanoke City Public Schools. And I just want to thank her for her steady dedication to this entire program, as well as thank the Roanoke City School Board for their continued support. Thank you, Suzanne. Thanks to all of you that are here today and have contributed in so many ways. This has truly been a community group a community collaborative effort. Thank you for your finances, your services, your materials, resources, talents, time, and sweat. <laughs> With that said, a very special thanks to everyone who has been involved in the construction process of this program, and this, this garden in particular. And a very special thanks, I hope he is here, Greg DeGenero. Yay, Greg is here. With Valley Craftsman, who is overseeing this project, and Steve Boggs with Intermont and his crew as well, who have worked tirelessly, even through the rain and the weekend, <laughs> to get the ground ready for today. It really is beautiful, thank you. Thank all of you for your gifts and your belief in this program and its ability to impact the community. I'd also like to acknowledge the instructor, Miss Anna B.B. Sachs. Where is Anna? Way in the back, Anna B.B. I'd love for you to be up here, Anna B.B. We will, we will see you more in a moment. It's her passion for agriculture and, educa and education that inspires me personally every day to keep working. And it inspires children with her gift for teaching. She also inspires her children with her gift for teaching and connecting them to the world around them daily. Spend a few minutes with Ms. Sachs and you will walk away infused with a bit more intellect, a bit of fear and awe for the world we live in, and a desire to go and learn more. Ms. Sachs is very quick to share that she grew up in the Roanoke Valley and that she wants kids to thrive not just get by. She passionately, she'll passionately tell you that kids deserve to not get sick and that they have the right to make choices, to take care of their body, and that they have choices about how to take care of it and what to put in it. They need to know what food is and is not and what influences in the environment are around them and what they can do about it. They also need to know that there is a world of jobs around these topics and subjects which she teaches about every day, nutrition, agriculture, and ecology. All of these things which Ms. Sachs so clearly teaches is what Food for Thought is all about. It's about investing in the long-term health of our community 
through providing education and the awareness of, the op of opportunity. Thank you, Ms. Sachs, for your work, and thanks to all of you who are here today behind this program. With that, it's my pleasure to introduce you to the principal of James Madison Middle School, Stephanie Hogan. Thank you, Kirsten. I'd like to formally welcome all of you. Some faces I'm very familiar with, some not so much. But I know one thing that we all have in common, and that is providing opportunities for our students to have experiences that will not only influence them in the school setting, but also in the future as they move on and become adults and begin giving back to our community, as many as you have here with this garden. I also would like to thank everyone, uh, Dr. Bishop, uh, who actually, when I first uh, came aboard here at James Madison, shared with me about this vision uh, with Food for Thought, along with Cynthia Lawrence, about what was just beginning here at James Madison. Uh, I cannot thank both of these ladies enough for educating me quickly uh, about that, as well as, of course, Mrs. Sachs, who has worked so diligently uh, to put together a curriculum that is actually uh, in its third year here at James Madison. And with that curriculum, just so that you're aware, it is a curriculum that not only addresses those areas of science that would naturally fit into the learning and instruction that you would uh, anticipate would with a garden, it's also a lot of it is about life skills. It's about things that our students will be able to do not only with their lives, but also with their children as they continue to grow into adulthood, as well as to influence and shape the way that they think about not only eating and growing vegetables and plants and those things, but also about ways that we take care of our earth and our environment. Also, one other thing I would like to tell you about is, is if you're not aware, is there have been multiple, and I mean multiple activities that have been going on, not only this school year, but the other two school years as well. They have hatched chickens. They have raised worms. They have cultivated seeds. They have learned about the water cycle. They have done lots of cooking. And let me tell you about cooking. With cooking, uh, those things are not only tasted uh, by the students in that course, uh, but they graciously will come around in the building and bring samples to myself as well as other staff members. And all I can say to you is I'd never experienced uh, avocado macaroni. And I want you to know, in comparison to macaroni and cheese, it was absolutely wonderful. And with that, those are just the few things that our students here at James Madison have had the opportunity to experience. With that said is, as well, my dream and vision for this is just to continue expanding not only the garden and what is taking place here, but also the information and wealth of knowledge and experiences that our children have. Because there is no greater joy for me than as a principal to see students get up from their desks, walk outside, touch the earth, and learn all at the same time. And if we think about that, that is exactly what our education uh, for students is designed to do, is to take all those things that they are learning in their classes and experience it and be able to go and to share that with others and to use it in their own lives. So I would ask that as you continue with the day and as you reflect upon uh, this experience uh, with Food for Thought and Green Living here at James Madison, is that you not look at this place as just a garden, but that you actually look at it as a live laboratory, because that is what it is, where they are experimenting and learning about so many different things. And as well, I want to thank you for everyone here for coming out today and showing your support uh, for this, as well as thank you for all the work and time and effort that has been put into this. Just know that here at James Madison, all of us, from the staff and the students and the parents and our community, we are very, very appreciative and thank you.
Thank you, Mrs. Hogan. I appreciate that. You know, a good friend of mine frequently reminds me that life is about choices. We have the freedom to make good choices, and we have the freedom to make bad ones. And you have all made the choice to be a part of Food for Thought, giving of your time, your money, your expertise, and your sweat to make sure that our children and their parents will be empowered to make good choices when it comes to their health and the environment. For all that you've done to make today a reality, I am eternally grateful. Food for Thought is very personal for me. When I was the age of these students, I was very heavy because of some of the poor choices that I made. And I didn't have half of the challenges that kids today have growing up. I've run a small business for 27 years and I've spent my entire adult life teaching myself how to be at my best, learning about fitness and food, especially where food comes from and how it affects my mind and my body so that I can always perform at my best. And when you ask my husband, Mark, about why I've been carrying this torch for four years, he says it all started when I tried to change his eating habits. <laughs> and after a while, I sort of gave up and decided it would be easier to change the eating habits of 2,700 middle school students. <laughs> Well, you may notice that Mark is not here today. <laughs> he is in Richmond testifying at a legislative commission hearing on Medicaid expansion. Our society, that's you and me, are faced with the financial reality of caring for generations who sometimes through no fault of their own have made poor choices with regard to smoking or nutrition Chronic disease costs us billions each year. And that's not even considering the cost to employers for an unhealthy workforce. They may not have had the freedom that you and I have had to make better choices. But education is the key. And that's why we're doing this. We need to do everything we possibly can to make sure that future generations have the freedom to make good choices about food and nutrition by teaching them how to access information, keeping local agriculture and farmers markets vibrant, and exposing them to some basic culinary and life skills. We called today a groundbreaking because it's really just the beginning. We have four more of these gardens to build. Sorry, Greg, Steve. We <laughs> one at each of the city middle schools. And I do hope that you'll choose to continue this journey with me. And I know I'm taking more than my allotted three minutes, but I have to acknowledge some people publicly for this garden is the work of many hands. First of all, I'd like to thank the founding partners for their vision, support, and patience as we got this initiative off the ground. Dr. Sandal, Dr. Falconetti, her predecessor, Kay Strickland, Eric Williams, and the Virginia Western staff and board and the Food for Thought Advisory Board, Advisory Board for their unwavering support. I'd like to thank Roanoke City Public School Superintendent Dr. Bishop, Assistant Superintendent Kurt Baker, Science Coordinator Tom Fitzpatrick, and Principal Hogan for enthusiastically starting the pilot program here in the classroom at James Madison as we went about getting the garden built. Deepest gratitude to school board member Suzanne Moore, Food for Thought instructor Anna Beebe Sachs, and Food for Thought program manager Kirsten Plunkett for keeping the faith. Thanks to Melissa Hodgkinson for the beautiful design and Richard White at LMW for his infinite patience every time we had to go revise the plans. And Katie Wallace and her team for making the brand come to life in print and online. Thanks to city manager Chris Morrill, building commissioner Jeff Shawver, ENS Administrator George Nevergold and their teams for holding my hand through the ins and outs of permitting and compliance. To Ken Lanford and Jack Avis for coaching me through the details of preparing for construction. For Ken Randolph for his unwavering support in stepping up first to say, we'll be there. I want to especially recognize the Virginia Western, Western Virginia Water Authority they have gone above and beyond anything 
that they've ever been asked to do. Thank you, gentlemen. Kirsten has already mentioned these guys, but they deserve a special recognition again. Greg De Janeiro of Valley Craftsman and Steve Boggs of Intermont, Intermont, they worked tirelessly through the rain, the mud, and into the night last night to make sure that today was perfect for you. They even made the sunshine. They're both as good as it gets in terms of craftsmanship. They share the vision and have contributed countless of hours of expertise and labor to get ready for this garden to operate. And I know I'm leaving lots of folks out. There were folks here on the grounds this morning spreading mulch, Higginbotham's and others. Kirsten's husband, thank you. These folks understand that they are helping to shape the future of this region and their confidence has been unwavering even in a tough economy. We've got a great foundation on which to move forward and for everyone who's had a hand in making Food for Thought a reality, I'm very grateful. And now I'd like to introduce Superintendent of Roanoke City Public Schools, Dr. Rita Bishop. Dr. Bishop is an inspiration. She is an innovator and a true leader and I look up to her very much. She was honored as Virginia's Superintendent of the Year for 2013 and we are very fortunate to have her at the helm. Dr. Bishop. Thanks, Cynthia. If you're gonna do anything worthwhile in this world, you have to be able to move fast. And when Suzanne Moore uh, came to me, we didn't have one single moment of pushback from anybody. And I think that is a really large tribute to the school board and all the partners in this. Uh, Mr. Kelly is Anna Beebe's father. And I know that he's here with his wife, um, Mrs. Kelly. And you know, I think what inspired me to get on board is, uh, I believe it was Mrs. Hogan's second day at work when we went to a dinner uh, and Cynthia was gracious enough to host the dinner. And I'm big on putting your money where your mouth is. And Mr. Kelly generously gave us a contribution for this. And somehow it was the tears in your eyes, Mr. Kelly, and your enthusiasm that made me want to be a large part of it. Now let me uh, tell you a story. Those of you who know me know that I'm not at all competitive, <laughs> right? Well, when I was a little kid, um, we had a wonderful garden and maybe that's how I got so interested in gardening. And um, some of you may know, do you know what corn suckers are? Oh, ho. <laughs> gardening lessons, Cynthia. Um, when corn stalks grow, they throw out suckers, and you have to pull them off because if you don't, it sucks the energy out of the corn plant. Well, I said to my mother, I'm going to plant the suckers. And she said, those suckers will never produce corn. Well, do you believe that for a single second? Well, my corn suckers grew bigger than their corn plants, and not only did they grow bigger than her corn plants, the corn tasted better. And even mother had to admit that. And so it was absolutely the beginning of my love of gardening. It's wonderful to see this vision come together. And I have always believed that our students need to eat the food that they grow. And I think I have something of an arrogant opinion that I could actually raise enough crops to feed myself and my family somehow. There's something awfully freeing about that, but just watching it happen is very important. This is going to be a lasting resource for our community, and I too join with Cynthia and hope that all the other middle schools will, will be able to have this kind of an experience for their students. Now please know that we live with the SOL, and this is all about the SOL. We have a wonderful curriculum and Tom Fitzpatrick and Anna Beebe have been extremely instrumental in writing that curriculum and making certain that it not only deals with the science of a garden, but also with the positive examples of the life choices that Cynthia spoke about. So this is academics and it's personal choices rolled into one. I believe that the students who engage in this gardening project will be connected to the world in a very different way than students who don't have these experiences. 
and I further believe that every student deserves this opportunity in this district. You know, right over there at Fishburn Park, uh, several years ago, we opened that school as a focus school for environmental studies, and there's a garden over there that has done very well. What nicer transition than to have the students at Fishburn Park look over here and see a really big garden and know that they can come to James Madison and participate as they have at, um, at Fishburn Park Elementary. <laughs> well, uh, my husband is always, uh, we live right over around the corner, is always asking me what I really think about gardens. And I think that it tastes better if you buy something grown locally. I think it tastes even better if you grew it yourself. And the way that I look at it is that there's so much to be learned academically from a garden. And you know, there's a spiritual aspect to gardening as well. Just watching that whole life thing happen. And ultimately, I, be, I believe that we simply fight obesity one tomato at a time. It's my pleasure to introduce um, my colleague from Virginia Western and my friend, Dr. Angela Falconetti. And she's done so much for this district. I appreciate you so much. Can't leave without a hug. I echo my sentiments that uh, Cynthia mentioned, her sentiments, excuse me, about Dr. Bishop. Dr. Bishop is a true a champion of not only K through 12 education, but the entire pipeline moving from K through 12 to higher education. And we're very fortunate that she serves as the superintendent of Roanoke City Public Schools. So it's an honor to work with her. I've asked Carissa to join me today. So uh, Carissa is a great representative of the students who are here today. She's 11 years old. And I have a question for Carissa. Carissa, do you like to eat healthy? Yes. All right, here's the tough question. Do you like macaroni and cheese with avocados? Actually, macaroni with avocados, not macaroni and cheese with avocados. Well, I've never tried it, but I hear it's delicious. <laughs> Excellent. What a great answer. Thank you, Carissa, for being up here with me today. Carissa is going to join for the rest of my comments. This is really an exciting day. Virginia Western's desire to engage in the Food for Thought program extended from Cynthia's vision. And we're very proud to partner with her as a, as a previous member, a prior member of our Virginia Western Educational Foundation Board of Directors, of which here today I note that Ken Lanford is here and also Mr. Ed Hall, who's our president, and Ken serves as our secretary. But Cynthia, thank you for your vision and your propelling the very nature of what we do at Virginia Western to enhance, as I mentioned, that Dr. Bishop believes in the K through 12 pipeline. Our Educational Foundation Board of Directors rep recognize that investing in this program impacts the development of students like Carissa and in turn will enhance the well-being of the citizens of the Roanoke Valley. Healthier students and a healthier lifestyle equates to a healthier tomorrow, right Carissa? Yes. Great answer. <laughs> the college and the educational foundation of the Board of Directors, as I mentioned previously about my admiration for Dr. Bishop, Respect Dr. Bishop and her leadership of the Roanoke City Public Schools. And Virginia Western extends gratitude to the Roanoke City Public School Board, specifically Suzanne Moore, for her leadership and vision and execution in making this day possible. Thank you, Suzanne. Kirsten Plunkett, Virginia Western's Food for Thought Program Manager, who I could not be more proud of, believes in the enhancement of the community through the execution of a healthy lifestyle and is a force propelling the very nature of the programmatic growth. Eric Williams should be equally recognized for his leadership in the programmatic development. Healthy, engaged students are the cornerstone of success and Food for Thought draws the connections between agriculture and nutrition and the earth and our bodies to create lifelong habits that support success at school, at work, and in our own lives. The content of Virginia Western's horticulture and culinary programs, which I see our culinary faculty members, thank you for being here, are examples of programs that are founded on this very principle. I bring special greetings on behalf of our president, Dr. Robert H. Sandel, who he and I synonymously share the passion for supporting the development of the whole student like all of us here today do. We'll leave you with a little food for thought. 
We at Virginia Western anticipate the continued growth, not only of this wonderful garden, but also of the future progression of the program. The vision is clear and the future is bright. Bright? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. And I believe next, I'm introducing Mr. David Trinkle. And as always, it's a pleasure to introduce you. Thank you for everything that you do. Thank you, Angela. Good afternoon. It's a great pleasure uh, being here. I remember just uh, many years ago being in a uh, conference room and a planning committee uh, with this vision, but just the very vision, the concept that you've heard a lot about this afternoon uh, of, of bringing education out into the, uh, the, the land surrounding schools and having students learn from the land and then take it back in. Uh, preparing meals, learning nutrition, and tying that to SOLs was just, you know, a fantastic idea and program, and it quickly caught fire, uh, you know, certainly thanks to Cynthia's enthusiasm, uh, but, but quickly caught fire, and a team came together, uh, and, and there are many members of the teams that have been recognized uh, here today, but when you have a team like that, you know it's going to happen, and it's going to happen well. I do a garden most every year, and already this garden looks a lot better than my garden uh, that I did this summer. I think the rain held me up. I don't know what happened. Uh, but, you know, I've been told that I wear a lot of hats, and what I enjoy is when all my different hats come together uh, and work as a team. And I think today, you know, I'm representing city council. I'm also a, a professor, associate dean at the medical school, uh, and work for Carilion Clinic. You know, the, the city of Roanoke, obviously city government, focuses on, you know, sidewalks, uh, you know, municipal issues, uh, uh, drainage and safety and welfare and social services. But it's been my inclination, and I think city council as a whole's inclination over many years uh, to grow the city, uh, to have an economic impact for the city through support of education, but also support of our environment and our natural amenities. And I think that's what comes together uh, so well uh, today. Uh, over the years, uh, we've, we've supported the Greenways. We've started a Clean and Green Committee. Uh, we've uh, supported our natural amenities. Uh, we've got Roanoke outside. Uh, we've got a cleaner watershed. We're working on our watershed still and runoff and uh, stormwater uh, protection. Uh, we've done conservation easements for Mill Mountain and Carvin's Cove, uh, forever uh, holding those uh, beautiful places into a, a conservation easement. Uh, we work with community gardening and believe that's a vital source uh, for our, our city. And, and we've uh, uh, helped uh, the community develop neighborhood and community farmers markets that get out into the neighborhoods that are so vital uh, to our city. You know, as a physician, you know, we, we certainly uh, support uh, healthy uh, living and prevention. Uh, there's a lot that Carillion is doing, including uh, organizing walks on the greenways and supporting greenways. Uh, I, as a professor and associate dean at the uh, medical school, work on the interprofessional domain, which is where we really try to get physicians in training as well as other healthcare providers in training to understand what other people do in the healthcare setting and to respect those roles and hopefully better work as a team for the patient and for the outcome of that patient. And a big part of that team has been nutrition. Uh, it's so big uh, that we now have a thread throughout our curriculum focusing on nutrition and the importance of nutrition uh, towards prevention and healthy living. We also require as part of that curriculum our students to do service learning projects. And we, we don't tell them what to do. We give them some ideas and thoughts. Uh, and it's always very interesting. Every year, a team of students, including nursing students and uh, physician assistant students, choose the school system. Uh, and they come into the school system. They mentor students on sciences and STEM uh, subjects. But more often than not, they choose to focus on nutrition. Uh, we talked about this garden years ago and students volunteered. They, they were eager to help build a project, but it wasn't ready at that point. But what they did is they volunteered to create a curriculum that would tie uh, gardening into the SOLs and, and into uh, healthy living and nutrition. Uh, so I'm very excited about this project. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy Food for Thought is here. I'm glad this is only the beginning and that it's going to continue to grow to the other schools. And I'm sure uh, the city of Roanoke, uh, Virginia Tech Carilion School of Medicine and Carilion Clinic and all the students involved will be uh, playing a, a vital role as we move forward. Uh, 
So thank you and thanks for doing this. Uh, it's my pleasure now to introduce uh, Laura Fornash. Uh, she was appointed Secretary of Education by Governor Bob McDonnell on August 23rd, 2011. As a member of the Governor's Cabinet, Secretary assists the Governor in the development and implementation of the state's education policy. And in addition, Secretary Fornash provides guidance to the 16 uh, uh, public universities, the Virginia Community College System, five higher education and research centers, the Department of Education, and the state-supported museums. She's got a lot on her plate. Uh, prior to this appointment, she served as Deputy Secretary of Education and as the Executive Director of the Governor's Commission on Higher Education Reform, Innovation, and Investment. Uh, before joining this administration, she spent 20 years just down the road at Virginia Tech in a number of different divisions, including student affairs, continuing education, distant le learning, and government uh, relations. She received her undergraduate and master's degree from Virginia Tech. She's a native of Chesterfield, uh, Virginia, is a graduate of Virginia Public Schools, and is married and has three children. Welcome, Dr. Fornash. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Trinkle. I appreciate that, that invitation, that uh, introduction, and I'm just delighted to be here on behalf of Governor Bob McDonnell, along with my colleague, Secretary Todd Haymore, and I also want to make sure that everyone uh, recognizes Marty Kilgore, who is also here, the Executive Director for the Foundation for Healthy Youth, who is also a partner in this project. As I was preparing to be here today, I was thinking about emails that I exchanged with Cynthia a couple years ago and was just so excited to see this come to fruition. And so I want to say, thank Cynthia for all of her hard work and for the partners that she has brought to the table to make this uh, a reality today. So thank you again, Cynthia, for all your hard work. In thinking about this particular project, I think about how it relates to the priorities of Governor Bob McDonnell. You may remember bumper stickers that said, Bob for jobs. Governor Bob McDonnell ran on a campaign of increasing jobs in the Commonwealth of Virginia. And one of his um, pri priorities was education because they believed in order to get a good job, you need a good education. And when I think about this project, it really connects two of the initiatives that the governor is focused on. One is college and career readiness, and two is access and affordability. And the Food for Thought initiative is an education tool, and we've heard a lot about that today. And it's going to be a resource for the students that are here to really get hands-on experience and practical application to the SOLs. And I've, we've heard the SOLs mentioned a number of times, and so those are really going to be um, important for students to have this practical laboratory for, for them to learn the SOL standards. And the focus that I see here is on, on math and on uh, science. The governor has made a tremendous push as it would relate to STEM education because he believes that this is where the jobs are in the future. And so the middle schoolers that participate in this project and the other gardens around the city will have the opportunity to embrace this type of experience and really help strengthen their interest as well as their knowledge in STEM education. The other thing that's exciting about this project is that it provides healthy foods. And as a mother of three elementary school children, I know that that uh, is a challenge for all mothers here and all parents here as they try to get, get children to eat healthier foods. And I, I can't imagine that my children would get excited about avocado macaroni yet. <laughs> but maybe after they, they tried it. And so providing an opportunity for young people to grow their own foods and to experience fresh vegetables is an exciting opportunity that will benefit them later in life. And I'm so excited that they will have this opportunity. We also know, and as I understand, that there's been a pilot program that shows that when young people um, are eating healthier, they're also succeeding better in the classroom. And so I'm, I'm hopeful that that pilot that's been here will continue with the other students in the program and really encourage uh, more healthy eating and uh, better SOL scores. Right, Dr. Bishop? <laughs> So in closing, I would like to again thank all the partners who have uh, participated in this project. It's just tremendous to see what can happen when a community comes together. And in particular, I too would like to recognize the Western Virginia Water Authority. As I understand, they have uh, committed tremendous resources and time and commitment into making this project a huge success. So thank you all for the support of the Food for Thought initiative. It is now my pleasure to introduce Secretary of Agriculture and Forestry, Todd Haymore. And I do have the microphone and would love to take the opportunity to embarrass him 
but uh, he could, <laughs> he'll have the microphone last, and so that might not work out too well for me. But Secretary Haymore has a tremendous background in agriculture, and I'm just so proud of everything that he's been able to accomplish under his leadership. He really has taken agriculture and forestry to a new level, and we are all so proud of the efforts that, um, that he's been able to accomplish. And so without further ado, I'd like to ask him to come to the microphone. Thanks, Laura. <laughs> Laura knows how to completely take away all my best lines and give her a hard time. But no, thank you. It's great to have a uh, colleague so uh, diligent in supporting uh, education and uh, all the governor's initiatives that Laura has been has done over the last three years. So, Laura, thank you for everything that you're doing. Um, it is a great, great day uh, to be Secretary of Agriculture and Forestry, particularly here in Roanoke, uh, to celebrate Food for Thought. and. Uh, I want to give a special uh, thanks to my good assistant here, John, and Walker, who was with me earlier. I'm not sure I could have done it today without y'all's assistance. So John and Walker, wherever Walker is now, thank you for all your good help this morning or this afternoon. Um, the people that have been recognized and thanked here today, uh, I, I think it's been a lot covered, but I would be remiss if I did not recognize Cynthia Lawrence. Um, Cynthia came to Richmond in late 2010, early 2011 with this idea. And I can tell you as secretary over the last four years, if I had a dollar for every time someone came to me or came to the cabinet with an idea that did not turn into a reality, I'd be far more wealthy without those, those realities coming to fruition than I would on the other side. So Cynthia, it is, it is indeed um, a great, great pleasure to be here to, and recognize all the work that you, your partners, and everyone from the city of Roanoke, the school system, have, have brought together the private uh, uh, support that you've garnered. To see that, through it, that reality, that idea come to reality and come to fruition, you deserve a great, great round of applause, and I'll lead it again. I have the distinct honor and privilege of representing Virginia's two largest industries, agriculture and forestry. Together, it's about an $80 billion a year industry. Agriculture represents about $55 billion in annual revenue. Forestry is in the 20s right behind it. Again, the two largest industries in the state. Uh, but I think far too often we take those industries for granted. We take agriculture and forestry for granted. They're always there for most of us. And you think about it. The two industries are really the foundation of our lives. All of us have to eat, all of us have to have clothes, and all of us hopefully have a roof over our heads and a bed to sleep in, and those are all agricultural and forestry products uh, making up that. And when you think about it being the foundation of our lives, you really think about how our children, and as Laura mentioned, she's the mother of three young uh, children. I'm the, th the father of three young daughters, all under the age of 10. We need to be better educating our children on the important roles that agriculture and forestry play in our lives. Uh, that is a job for us as parents. It's a job as the school system is st obviously stepping up and the private sector around us. It's very, very important because we're so dependent on foreign sources for our fuels do we really want to be dependent on foreign sources for our foods? I know the answer to that is no. And by training, giving these children a better understanding of the important role that agriculture plays, forestry play, particularly in our in our day-to-day -day lives, but when they have the opportunity not only to, to eat healthy foods and, and grow up to be good stewards of the land and consumers and buy healthy, but uh, everything that goes on in between it's very, very important and something that we should all, again, play a very, very solid uh, role in and su supporting. So the fact that Roanoke and the private sector, the school system, uh, everyone here today has stepped forward to make this uh, become a reality is just outstanding, and we need to be replicating this across the state. I'm a product of a farm just about uh, two hours uh, southeast of here, just outside of Danville. We grew up with gardens. We grew up uh, picking our own fruits and vegetables and eating them, canning them, and using them. Uh, I had a great, great um, appreciation for agriculture, and it's something that I'm able to give back to now as Secretary of Agriculture and Forestry. But I know, even in a great, great rural economy uh, like Danville, Pennsylvania County, where I'm from, that relies so much on agriculture, there were still so many children there who did not have uh, good sources of food, who did not eat healthy, 
uh, and missed, missed out on so much of, of that and part of their youth. So again, uh, this is a great, great opportunity to fill that void, and I congratulate uh, everyone involved in this effort, as I mentioned earlier, but most of all, I congratulate the students, and uh, as you move forward and you plant these uh, seeds and you watch them turn into uh, the crops that you'll harvest and eat, and, uh, and, and think, about, think about that, and remember those good habits, those good healthy eating uh, opportunities that you'll have, and carry those forward throughout the rest of your life. So Cynthia and the rest of everybody here in Roanoke today, thank you again for having me. It's an honor and a privilege, and I look forward to seeing this, again, spread beyond Roanoke, hopefully to all the other school districts in the, uh, in the state of Virginia. Congratulations. I really am appreciative of your words. Thank you, Secretary Haymor. Thank you, Secretary Fornash. Thank you, everyone. And I should explain, this is not a typical groundbreaking. We're going to do a ceremonial groundbreaking. And then Ms. Sachs is going to come up here and walk. And the students and Ms. Sachs are actually going to help everyone plant the first seeds in the bed. And they're going to be walked through a lesson. So are we ready? Everyone have a towel? Yeah, we're gonna have to share one. Okay. <laughs> Are you ready? Okay, on the count of three, one, two, three.